Greetings, fellow mathematicians. In our seventh example, we're going to take a look at a slightly tricky problem where we're going to have to combine different ideas for choosing the form of the particular solution together. So to start this one, you should be able to find the complementary solution very quickly. You get as your characteristic roots negative 1 and negative 2, giving you your complementary solution linear combination of exponential functions. All right, we can now move on to the particular solution. We're going to use undetermined coefficients for that. We always start by looking at our right-hand side, what we call g of x, which is 2x squared plus 10 times e to the 3x. And we make a choice for the particular solution from here. Now, the only new part occurs right now. We have a sum of two terms. If either of those terms were, were there by themselves, we would know how to choose our particular solution. Well, here we have a degree 2 polynomial. Here we have an exponential. We're adding them together. We're going to add together our two ideas for the individual particular solutions into a single big choice for the particular solution. So we're going to try a general degree 2 polynomial times a general exponential function. And we're going to put those two different parts together. So our choice here for the particular solution, we're going to try ax squared plus bx plus c. That's your degree 2 polynomial corresponding to the term 2x squared. And we're going to add to that a general exponential function with a constant d in front times e to the 3x. And that's the only new part to this problem. The rest of the work's the same. We're going to calculate the first and second derivatives, plug them back into the non-homogeneous ODE, and solve for the values here of a, b, c, and d. So let's go ahead and crank out those derivatives. Looks like we should get 2ax plus b. Be careful to use the chain rule, differentiating your exponential function. You'll get a factor of 3. So 3d times e to the 3x. We're going to differentiate one more time to get yp double prime. It looks like we'll have 2a. Your b is a constant. That differentiates to 0. But the chain rule will give you another factor of 3, giving you 9d times the exponential function. All right, we have all three of our terms. We're going to plug them back into the non-homogeneous ODE. And we want that all to come out to 2x squared plus 10 e to the 3x. Now, your expressions for yp, yp prime, and yp double prime are kind of long. And if you were to write them all horizontally, again, the work's going to be rather long. So instead of just plugging all these in, like we might have in earlier problems, let's actually just take a look at our expressions here and see what sort of terms we have. Well, we have x squareds floating around just in one spot. All right, what else do we have? Uh, we have x terms, we have constant terms, and we have exponential terms. All right, so let's just go ahead and see if we can extract them. Be careful, your first derivative term was multiplied by 3, and your y term was multiplied by 2. So just be careful, this is going to be multiplied by 3, and that will be multiplied by 2. So let's look for our x squared terms, our x terms, our constants, and we also have exponential terms. All right, so let's start with all of our x squareds. And it looks like 
Our only x squared here is in yp, but remember yp is multiplied by 2, so that's really 2a x squared, and that's the only x squared. And that should equal the coefficient of x squared on this side, which is 2. All right, you can solve that right now. That tells you that a is 1. All right, let's go ahead through all these terms in your differential equation and extract the x's, being careful to multiply by 3 and 2 into yp prime and yp respectively. So look for x's. Let's go from the second derivative here. No x's. Yp prime, we have an x, but remember that's multiplied by 3, so we have 6a. And we don't need to include the x, we're just looking at the coefficients. Do we have any other x coefficients or terms? Yes, right here, but yp is multiplied by 2, so that should be 2b. All right, and if you take a look at your right-hand side here, we don't have just an x term, which means the coefficient is 0. All right, now once you have your value for a, well, notice you can plug that in here, and the work shouldn't be too bad. If a is 1, you get 6, subtract it, then divide by 2. Looks like we should get b as negative 3. So this is falling to place rather nicely. Next, we're going to look for our constant terms. And now we do have one coming from the second derivative. So we have 2a. That's not multiplied by any coefficient in front of the second derivative term. So we have just 2a. Next, we're going to move to the first derivative term and look for constants. We have a constant b, but that's multiplied by 3, so we add 3b. And do we have any other constants coming from yp? Yep, we do. We have c, but remember that is multiplied by 2. So really here, that should be 2c. All right, and if you take a look at your right-hand side, there are no pure constants which means this should equal 0. All right, now that we have the values of a and b, notice you can plug them in. And we have a as 1, so we're going to get 2. What is b? Negative 3, so we get minus 9. Plus 2c equals 0. And this should go very quickly from here. We get negative 7, looks like you can go ahead and add that and then divide by 2. So it looks like we get here c as 7 halves. We have one more coefficient to determine, which is your exponential coefficient d. And we have them basically all at the end of our expressions. So if we go ahead and extract them, the second derivative gives me 9. What do we have coming from our first derivative? This is multiplied by 3, so 3 times 3d, which is another 9d. And in our function term, yp, that's multiplied by 2. We have another 2d. All right, and that should equal your coefficient of the exponential function on the right side, which is 10. Now, you might have combined these like terms together as you went, but those were just extracting all the different constants through there. So I wanted to make sure you could see how we're implementing the work here. But notice that just combines together 18 plus another 2. We should get 20d equals 10, and that's very easy to solve. Looks like we get here d as 1 half.
And that takes care of finding all the undetermined coefficients in our combined choice for the particular solution. We added a general degree two polynomial to a general exponential function. So if we plug our values in, looks like for our particular solution, we have a as one. So we get one x squared, what's b minus three x. We have our value for c, which is seven halves. And what is our value for d? One half. So we get one half times e to the three x. And that is your particular solution using the method of undetermined coefficients where we combined two different ideas to get the form for our particular solution. All right, just to always finish in the same way, I always like to write down what our solution comes out to, the full solution, which is our complementary solution, c1 times e to the negative x plus c2 times e to the negative 2x, and we add to that our particular solution, x squared minus 3x plus 7 halves plus 1 half e to the 3x. And that completes this example where we went through a combined choice for a particular solution, combining two simpler ideas together to get one bigger form for the particular solution. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you're learning a lot, make sure to support the channel, like, and subscribe.